What does it take to dance together? So, I don't know about you, but I love to dance, but I want to lead. And that's not supposed to be my role, okay? I'm supposed to be the follower. I'm supposed to do it backwards and in heels. But I want to lead. So when I was trying to learn how to salsa, because we were going to a salsa club in Chicago where we could dance, I discovered that I could dance next to the person. <laughs> but if they tried to make me do it backwards and I had to follow, it just was not going to succeed. When we think about what it means to live as Christians, to live as people that believe that love can conquer hate, that light can shine in the dark places, that hope can win out of despair. We need to learn the steps of the dance. We need to learn the steps that will guide us to be the people that God knows you can be inside. And one of the steps is those first words that Jesus says to the disciples. Peace be with you. So I want you to think about this. Peace be with you. Jesus says that as he has to go through a locked door. Right? When Jesus appears to the disciples, the door is locked and they're hiding. They're hiding in that room. They're full of fear. They're full of discouragement. They're unsure of what is next. And even though Peter and the beloved disciple and Mary have all experienced that something new has happened. Mary, in fact, went out to the disciples telling them, I have seen the Lord. And yet there they are in a locked room, afraid. And Jesus says, peace be with you. Those are the words he says and speaks into their hearts. Peace be with you. Peace be with you in your weakness and fear. Peace be with you in your guilt and shame. Peace be with you in your uncertainty and doubt. Peace be with you. How many of us are not at peace? We fear something. We're lacking something. In general, this year and a half has just been full of fear. How do we find the steps of peace in the midst of that fear? How do we experience that step in the dance of peace? There's no easy answer to that question, right? How do you experience peace? How do you find those moments where you are not stuck in your fear and can't move out? Who do you turn to then? For the disciples, they have that opportunity once again to connect with Jesus and to hear him say, peace be with you. And then do you know what he does? He breathes the spirit into them. So in the Gospel of John, this is Pentecost, okay? It's not fire and flames and big winds. It's Jesus' breath being blown onto them and they receive the spirit. And then he invites them to go out. How do we think about peace? And as I was thinking about this, because the theme is dancing, right? So how many of you have seen the Jerusalem videos? The nuns dancing to the music, right? The, the airport people dancing, the flight attendants dancing in the plane, the, the doctors and nurses, the teachers, the, the Garda. In these videos, from all over around the world, there's this dance that's happening. 
that people are learning. It's like the Macarena, only it's from South Africa, so it's Jerusalem. And when the author of the song describes how she came up with the words, she talks about being in a very dark place. So if you've heard the tune, it's by a DJ, right? Master KG. So his job is to create the beat, right? The rhythm that you will be dancing to. And he played that beat for her three or four times. And she says that the words that came into her head because she was in a really dark place were Jerusalem, my home. Jerusalem, my home. She wanted God to take her from her present reality and bring her to a place of peace and contentment that she desperately needed. That this song that is so joyful, because if you haven't seen the nuns, you gotta see the nuns dancing, okay? This song that is so joyful, because it's based on a wedding beat from South Africa, is a song, though, that for her, the writer of the words, comes from a place of darkness, a place where she needed a bit of hope and light, a place where she needed to hear and experience and feel something different. And so she wrote these words, Jerusalem, my home, rescue me, join me, don't leave me here. My place is not here, my kingdom is not here. Rescue me, come with me, save me, save me, save me. Don't leave me here. Save me, save me, save me. Don't leave me here. She speaks about Jerusalem as that place, that vision where that can happen. It reminds me of some of, some of the Psalms. They're called the Songs of Ascent, meaning these are the songs that people sang when they were on their way to Jerusalem for the high holy days or for a religious event or traveling to Jerusalem. And one of them goes from Psalm 122. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem built as a city that is bound firmly together. To it the tribes go up and the tribes of the Lord, as was described for Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord, for there the thrones for judgment were set up, the throne of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Peace be within your walls and security within your towers, for the sake of my relatives and friends, I will say, peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. Jesus, in his final days, cried out for peace in Jerusalem. Cried out for the weeping and crying of the women over that city, saying that God would nurture them would enfold them and comfort them. That this, this psalm is a psalm that encourages us to think about the wholeness and completeness that we can get. That says that we have matched our steps to God's steps. And literally, in a song of ascent, you are marching, right? that the song was written so that you could walk your way to that place of peace, that city of hope, that place of light. And yet here's the thing, Jerusalem right now, Jerusalem for the last 50 years, Jerusalem for thousands of years, has been this beacon and sign of hope, this place of religious meaning for so many people, this place where people want to go to experience the presence of their faith, and yet it has been fought over and divided and separated so many times. And right now there 
is east and west Jerusalem and behind the wall, behind the barbed wire, are the Palestinians separated from the rest of Jerusalem. And in fact, many of the Palestinians were pushed out of their homes and made to flee somewhere else so that the Israel, Israel could come in and take over those places and spots and homes, demolish them and build something new that they then occupied and left the Palestinians with less and less territory. And so how do you talk about peace? Peace being within you when you feel like you are trapped in a place where there is no peace. Where you have to fear what will happen to you as you journey about your life. Some of my friends who visited Israel and have been on international tours, peace tours, talk about how one time while they were in, I think he said Bethlehem, that they were supposed to go to one house, but something was happening and the Israelis blocked off all the streets and people scattered to try to get around. And in order to get where they needed to go, they had to go through other people's houses rather than take the street because they weren't allowed to travel. And they were tourists, American tourists. Jerusalem. The word itself means city of peace. It's a place divided. And yet, here's the thing. So I'm going to show you now a video of how do you take the steps of peace? How do you take the steps of joy and hope when you feel like you're in a place where it's not possible? How do you learn to dance? The dance that Jesus calls us to. The video I'm going to show you is Jerusalem. But I took clips from all the ones made by Palestinians. So you're going to see Palestinians dancing in Jerusalem and Gaza and on the West Bank. And you will see Palestinians dancing in joy and hope. But also because in their hearts... They hear the pain of that song, right? That this joyful song is also a painful song because they are also crying out for their home, for the hope that they can be whole, that peace can reign, that they no longer have to fear the barbed wire or the bombs dropping on their house, that they no longer have to live separated from each other. They in these dances, proclaim and take those steps, that love can win, that hope can triumph, that light can come overcome the darkness, even though they know that after this dance, they could encounter one of those bombs dropping. They could encounter a child, a kindergartner, stop on their way from school. They know that. But they take the moment to take the step and dance, to feel that sense of wholeness. Because that's what Jesus says when he says, peace be with you. He's inviting you not to this sense of conflict being ended, but that peace, that sense of wholeness and completeness that you can experience when you come to a place where you know who you are how you fit into the world, and what place and role you have when you've taken the steps to walk on God's path. That what God wants for us is wholeness. And our job, for when Jesus breathes the Spirit into us and sends us out, is to help others come to that sense of wholeness, experience what it means to be at peace, to come to a place where they can be complete. So, if you know the steps, you could get up and dance. <laughs> or you can just bop along. <laughs> <laughs>